again, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with a continuation of the Wavy Waffle Stitch Blanket. want to thank all of you so much for joining me today. I really hope that you're enjoying the project thus far. And today, we should be able to finish up the full repeat involved for the pattern. And I also want to give a big, big thank you to my testers who helped make sure that this pattern is all hunky-dory. And speaking of the pattern, it is available on my Etsy store link in the description box down below. So, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, row five. So, last row was on the right side. So, row five, we're going to be doing it's the wrong side. So, we're going to have a lot of front and back post double crochet. So, we're going to start off by chaining up three and turning the work. There we go. All right, and then... First things first, not this first stitch, but that second stitch, we need a back post, double crochet stitch. There we are. And then skipping this next double, going into the chain space with a double, a chain one, and another double. There we are. And then, okay, now, looking at our piece, you can see that we have a, a back post right there, and the posts are always separated by two stitches. So this next stitch is going to be a back post, then two front posts, then a back, then two front, a back, two front, and so forth until we hit the decrease, okay? so back post almost there we go so back post then two front posts so when you know what to look for and you're able to sort of read where the stitching is going it makes the process a lot easier but that sometimes takes time. Okay, so we've got our back post and two front posts, then a back and two front, back post, and then two fronts, there we go. And then another back and two fronts. You know, the, the decrease itself, it's all the way over here, but we're getting there. So let's do the back post. And two fronts. There we go. And, okay, so I can still do another back post. All right, now, we're going to be skipping over this decrease. So we're going to do a front post and a front post crocheted together. So going around the front of the post. Pulling up a loop, pull through two, skipping over that decrease, going into the next one, yarn over, front post, pull up a loop, pull through two, then pull through all three loops. And that is the decrease for this row. Then continuing right along with a back post and two front posts until we reach the peak. So I got a back and then two fronts. And a back. Two fronts. A 
the back. Two fronts. And a back. And then we have our increase. So do our back post. There we go. And then into that chain one space, double, chain one, double. And then continue on down to the next valley. Okay, so starting off with a back post. And then two fronts. And a back. Two fronts. And a back. Two fronts. Should be getting close. And okay, so yes, we are actually going to be doing a back post and then these two front posts together. So let me do that back post first. Okay, and then again, front post, front post together, skipping this central decrease. And there you go, another decrease. Okay, scooting right along. Back post. Two fronts. And a back. Two fronts. back. So you sort of get a, a, a bit of a rhythm going after a while. Okay, and then a back, and then we have our peak once again. Okay, we got the back, and then into the peak, that chain one space, double, chain one, double. And so you just keep doing this for the rest of the row. And we only have one more valley and then building our way up to the peak again. So let's get to it. Okay, so after doing our increase, going to do a back post followed by two fronts and work our way down to the valley. Back, two fronts, and back, two fronts, And back, there we go, two fronts, okay, and back, and this should be the spot for our decrease if I am not mistaken. 
Okay, yep, it is, because we have our decrease right there. So it's these two that I need to do uh, front post stitches together. So start the front, pull up that loop, pull through two, skip the center decrease, yarn over, through, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through all three. Okay, continuing on with a back and two fronts. Back, two fronts. And a back, two fronts. Two fronts, okay, and we are just about there. This is the increase peak at the edge here, so I got to do a back post there. There we go. And then into the chain one space, double, chain one, double. And then do not forget, we have to skip this stitch right here, skip that one, and then into the second to the last stitch, back post. And then the very last stitch, stitch a double in between these last two stitches, right in there, right in that space. And there you go. So that is row five. Alrighty. Okay, row six should go a little bit smoother because on the front side, it's just front posts and regular doubles. So that instantaneously makes it a bit easier. So I'm going to start off with a chaining of three as per usual and turn the work and get my tail out of the way. All right, so starting right off with a front post around that second stitch. There we are. Going to skip this next double going into the chain one space with a double chain one double. There we are. Okay, and then see right here we have a front post. You always front post the front posts and you double the other stitches on the right side. So I'm going to do a double into the next stitch front post around the front post, and then two doubles, and so on and so forth until we reach the bottom of the valley where we do our decrease. So we got our two doubles, front post, and two doubles, Front post, and two doubles. Oh, there, yeah, this is a lot easier on this side. Okay, now, if you look closely, you can see that this right here is our decrease. So, I'm going to do two front posts together, okay? So, start the front post, there we go, skipping that central stitch there, go into the next post, pull up that loop, pull through two, and pull through all three. There we go, creates a nice little peak, okay? 
then two regular doubles followed by a front post and so on and so forth until we reach the peak and we do our increase. Two doubles and a front. And pull out some more yarn as needs be. It happens. Okay, got my front post, now two doubles. And a front. Two doubles. And a front. And a double. And then into that chain one space, double, chain one, double double, chain one, and double right into that chain one space. Then a double into the next stitch. Front post. And two doubles. Front post. Two doubles, front post, and two doubles, and then we do our decrease for the valley. Okay, so again, we're going to be doing these two front posts together. Skip that central decrease there. There we are. And then two doubles. Front post. Two doubles. Front post, two doubles, front post, a double, and then in that chain one space, double, chain one, double for the increase for the peak. And there you go. So I believe we have just one more. Yep, we've got one more valley to cover for row six. Okay, so after doing our increase at the peak, next stitch is a double, and then a front post, two doubles, and a front post, and so forth, until we reach the bottom of the valley. So two doubles, front post, two doubles, and a front post, two doubles, And a, oh, see, I almost got two into the groove. It happens. So it's at this point <laughs> that we have to double crochet these two front posts together. You know, it's, it's easy to get sort of into the mellow mindset autopilot upon occasion. All right, so we start at that front post, and then we go into the next, pull up that loop, Pull through two, then pull through all three. You know, you need to keep your wits about you. All right. And then double into the next two stitches. 
and then front post. And two doubles. And a front. Two doubles. And a front. And then a double into the next stitch. And then we have reached the peak once again. So into that chain one space, double, chain one, double. Okay. And again, skip this next stitch going into the post with a front post. And then last but not least, in between these last two stitches, double crochet. And there you go. And I know I keep stressing the point with this edge. It's because, well, if you didn't skip that stitch, yes, it would start to go, you know, and uh, we don't, we don't want that, you know, um, we don't want this to look like a uh, MC Escher painting of melting clocks and so forth. All right, so on we go to row seven. Okay, row seven. Start off by chaining up three and turning the work. There we go. All right, so yes, we have front and back post stitches to deal with because this is the wrong side. All right, so skipping this first stitch, going around the second one with a back post. There we are. Skipping the next stitch, going into the chain one space with a double, chain one, double. Okay, now examining our stitches, you can see how they're paired up. You know, if you look closely, these are sort of facing the front and that one's sort of scooched behind. Well, that is what you need to pick up on. So the next two stitches are going to be front posts, then a back, then two front and a back and so on and so forth until we reach the bottom of the valley. Okay, so two fronts. and a back. Two fronts. And a back. Two fronts. And a back. Okay, now we've got two fronts and then the decrease in two fronts. So we're gonna do a front and then two fronts together and then a front, okay? So, because we have to skip over that middle decrease there. So going to do a, a front, front post double, and then these two front posts together. So yarning over, pulling up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, skipping over that decrease in the middle, going underneath that post, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through all three loops, there you are, and then do another front post double. There we are, and then we're going to work our way up to the next peak. So back post, around the back post, 
and front in the next two. Ooh, ooh, I'm all tangled. It happens. <laughs> all right, front. There we go. It happens. And front. Okay, and then back. And then two fronts. And back. Two fronts. And then we have reached the chain one space at the peak. So into that chain one, double, chain one, double. And then proceed down towards the next valley. So that's two fronts and a back. So on and so forth until we reach the decrease. So I got my two fronts and a back, two fronts, and a back, two fronts, and a back. Okay, so it's at this point we have reached the decrease again. So it's a, a front, then two fronts together, and then another front. So, do this front post here. And then yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, skipping that central decrease, going into the next post, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through all three, shaboom, and then another front post. And then we continue on in the same fashion all the way up until we reach the next peak. So back post, and two fronts. And back. Two fronts. And back. Two fronts, okay, and then we have reached the chain one space once again. So in that space, double, chain one, double, and at this point we only have one more valley to go. Okay, so for the last valley of row seven, going to be after doing our increase there at the peak, two fronts, and then a back, two fronts, And a back, two fronts, and a back. 
Okay. And we are at that decrease point again. So it's a, a front post, then two front posts together, and another front post. So let me do this front post first. Front. Okay, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, skip the central decrease, yarn over, going into that next post, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through all three loops for that decrease. Okay, and then we have another front to finish the pairing. Back post. Two fronts. And a back. Two fronts. And a back. Two fronts. Okay, and then, last but not least, we have our chain one space. So in that space, double, chain one, double. Okay, and we've reached the end couple of stitches. So again, skip that third from the end, that stitch right there. And then around the second to last stitch, this one, do a back post. And then in between the last two stitches, double crochet. There. All right. And that, my dears, is the end of row seven. And we've just got one more row for the full repeat. All right, let's get to it. Okay, row eight. If you guys are still with me at this point, congratulations, because this is the last row for the repeat. I'm going to start by chaining up three and turning the work. And fortunately, yes, this is a right side facing row, so it is going to be fairly quick and simple. So after chaining up three, do a front post around the front post. There we are. Skip that next double into the chain one space. Double, chain one, double. Okay. Then, as you can see, we have a post, two doubles, post, two doubles. This is going to be a post right here, a front post. So next stitch, front post. And then two regular doubles and continue in this fashion until we reach the decrease at the base of the valley. So got my post, two doubles, post, two doubles, and front post. Oops. Front post. Yep, yep. Come on. What is the matter with me? Don't answer that. All right. And then two doubles. There we go. Okay. Almost there have to do a front post still. There we go. And then, see right here in the middle is where we have our decrease. So it's a double and another double, these two doubles together, okay? So next stitch, pull up a loop, pull through two, 
yarn over, skip that central decrease, going into the next stitch, pull up a loop, pull through two, then pull through all three. Okay, and then we do our front post and two doubles. Double, double, double mint gum. I don't know if any of you remember those rather awful commercials for double mint gum. Oh my goodness, I'm, I'm dating myself here. All right, then a front post and two doubles. There we go. Front post and two doubles. And just about at the peak, I still have to do a front post. There we go. And then into that chain one space, you know what to do. Double, chain one, double. There. Next stitch, front post, followed by two doubles. Now, actually, I don't know what was worse, the commercials for double mint gum or the commercials for big red gum. You know, juicy fruit too, for that matter. I don't know what it was about gum commercials in the 70s and 80s, but oi. Okay. So we did our two doubles, then we need to do a Front post, two doubles, front post, two doubles, front post. There we go. Okay, and we've reached the the valley again. So it's these two doubles stitched together. So yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two. Yarn over, skip that central decrease, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through all three. Front post in the next. Followed by two doubles. And front post, two doubles, front post, two doubles, front post, And then since we've reached the peak in that chain one, double, chain one, double. There. And we just have one more valley to go. Okay, so we just did the increase. Next up is a front post followed by two doubles until we reach the base of the valley. So two doubles, there we go, and a front post, two doubles, front post, two doubles, Okay, front post, there we go. All right, then it's going to be doing these two doubles together, skipping that central decrease. So yarning over, pulling up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, skip that central decrease, going to that next stitch, pull up a loop, pull through 
two, pull through all three, shaboom. Then front post, two doubles. There we go. Front post, two doubles. Front post, two doubles. Almost there. Front post, and we've reached the peak. So into that chain one space, double, chain one, double. being sure to skip this next stitch, that naughty little guy there, and around the next stitch. So skip this one into the next one, do a front post. And last but not least, in between the last two stitches, a double crochet. Ta -da! And there you go. That is the full repeat that you need to continue along with the pattern. So to continue along, all you need to do is repeat rows three through eight for as long as you want, uh, you know, as long as, you know, as long as you want the project to be, you know, just keep repeating rows three through eight. And so like, for instance, I'm not gonna do the whole row, but as an example, you know, if you wanted to continue on, you would chain up three and turn your work. And then if you look at the work, you know, if you just look at the stitches as they are, so you would skip this first stitch into the second one. You would do a back post and you would skip this next stitch into the chain one space, double, chain one, double. Nothing new about that, right? And then looking at your stitches, where do you see what would be front posts and back posts, right? So if you look at the, the pairings, you've got these two and then you've got a back one, you've got two and a back one, and then you have this one. So this is obviously right here, a back post. So this means that this one right here would be a front post. So we've got a, a front post right there. And then it would be a back post. And two front posts. You know, it's, it's not just following a pattern, but if you can read the stitches that really helps. So then it'll be a back and two front. Two front. And so forth until you hit the valley, right? Well, at the base of the valley, if you look closely, okay, so it'd be a, a back to front, and then we have a back, the central decrease, and then another back. So in this case, it would be this one and this one, two back post double crochets together, then working your way up to the top of the peak. Our chain one space is right here. So tooling along this way would be two front and a back, two front and a back, a front, and then a double chain one double and so on and so forth. So yes, the, you know, the videos I'm sure are going to help, you know, as you get used to the pattern. Yes, the written pattern also will help, but it's, that's not just that for me. It's also explaining, you know, why we do what we do and being able to identify your stitches and figure out what you need to do based on the work that you already have. Okay, so yeah, you just keep doing rows three through eight. And in the description box, yes, there is a link to 
you know this video as well as uh, the the first part of the the playlist. You know, I've been trying to be good about doing that, you know, for my videos as of late. Um, and of course, also, yes, there is a link to the written pattern at my Etsy store if you guys are interested. Um, you know, your support is always welcome and much, much appreciated, just as it is much, much appreciated. The help that I got from my testers, making sure that this pattern is 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 workable, is doable. It makes sense, you know. You just have to pay attention, and yes, it clicks. Okay, so enough of my yammer yammering. I hope very, very much that you like this pattern. Give it a try. Um, as far as what kinds of yarns to use, personally, for this, you know, kind of pattern, I would suggest a solid color or perhaps uh, a, a slow changing ombre colorway, that sort of thing. If it's very choppy, um, sort of like a, a yarn cake that, you know, uh, distinctly changes its color from like a, a red and then into a green and then into a white and so on and so forth. And you've got uh, sort of blocks of color. It's going to break up the pattern, I find. That's just me and my personal opinion. If you're doing a quick change variegation, that one, I think it would look sort of muddy um, and it would take away from this beautiful texture that you have going on here. Sometimes simplicity is best. Sometimes you want the stitch to do the talking versus the yarn doing the talking. And if both are fighting for attention, well, usually you can't hear the conversation. You know, usually it's a bit of a, a din, if you will. That being said, I would also recommend using either a, a three weight or a four weight. Heavier than that, it will be very heavy and also it is already a substantial and thick kind of stitch. So a three or a four weight, that's my personal recommend. At any rate, all that being said, thank you so much for joining me. I really hope that you like this and let me know what you're going to do with this in the comments section down below always interested in hearing about your personal creative journey and your creative process and all that good stuff. Yeah. And you know what to do until next time, right? I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, stay stitching, and please stay safe. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now, everybody, and have a great, great day.